And hey, welcome to Friends of Wager Talk. We've got a, a great one for you here, guys. I'm Scott Spritzer. I'm not the great one. The great one's right next to me. He's Mark Dufty, sportsbook director over at Jerry's Nugget. And a uh, longtime odds maker, very well respected odds maker in the business. And we're going to talk about a lot with Mark today. But uh, we call him the lone wolf in Las Vegas. Mark and Jerry's Nugget tend to do things a little bit differently than your average sports book in Las Vegas. They set and they stand by their own lines. They're a standalone book. They'll take the big bets. And Mark, thanks for joining us today on this Thanksgiving week. My pleasure. Hey, I got to ask you to explain to the folks who maybe have never been out here, have never really, you know, taken it seriously other than maybe a happy fun bet or two in, uh, in, the, in the world of sports betting. I got to ask you to explain the difference between what you're doing at Jerry's Nugget, you taking that stand, the book itself, having that standalone uh, respect that you've got in Las Vegas compared to what the corporate books do. What's the difference? Well, I like to think of us as an old-fashioned gambling joint. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can't take quite the big limits because we are a standalone joint. We don't have rooms, uh, so we don't have the tourists coming, pouring in to, to offset some of that wagers. But we take a pretty fair bet, and what we what we take in is, uh, you know, is what we're rooting for, or rooting, you know, rooting sure. on. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a us against them mentality, whereas a lot of the corporate places nowadays, and nothing against that, they're getting you know, so much action on, on, on games. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, they're just letting the VIG kind of take care of itself. It's not, not necessarily getting two-way action, but a lot of, a lot of square action, a lot of sure. parlay action, and uh, uh, ours is an old-fashioned gambling joint. I gotta ask you how, how long you've been in the business, if you wanna reveal that, and, and what's the biggest difference in bookmaking now compared to when you first got in the business? Almost 35 years. I started uh, at the original Castaways. I was fortunate enough to uh, start. Uh, my mentor was Sonny Reisner, the oh, legendary yeah. bookmaker uh, at the Castaways. Uh, and uh, it's just incredible. The, the amount of information out there uh, that, that wasn't before. Uh, we used to have someone um, literally with a pocket full of quarters calling in changes <laughs> from, 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 around, from around town. Um, and, you know, now with the, the internet and, and all the information, just everything is so much more accessible. Right. Um, I don't know if it makes it easier or tougher on either side of the counter, but it's, it's certainly more fascinating. What did you guys, I mean, I remember, you know, when I first came to Vegas, I was a young pup. I was fresh out of high school. We're talking like 1984. And I really got into the betting end of things. And I'm talking serious money, not just a little bit here and there, but serious money was around 1989, 1990, 91, right around there when I started to co-host the Stardust Line Show uh, with Seed Williams. You mentioned the difference between information. You guys you would get on the phone and see where guys are moving their numbers. But what about information on the players and the games themselves? Because I remember we had Jim Feist on a few weeks ago, and we were talking about back in the day when you knew certain people were going to be coming to town, you'd ask them to pick up newspapers in those hometowns. And you'd read what the beat writers were talking about, but you couldn't click a mouse. You actually had to get those newspapers. And there was a joint here in town called Hometown News. How did you guys get your information on what players are doing what when you have to make lines on 55, 60 college football games? One of the things that Sonny was so good at is networking. And he, he grew up uh, in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he knew a lot of people around the country. And, and, and he was so well-respected and so well-liked that uh, he, he would be contacting people all week as far as, you know, potential injuries and, sure. and, uh, and, and, and different things. He was really up on... Uh, on on being on top of that kind of stuff, so that was part of it. We would always try to look at you know out of town newspapers. Sure. Uh, uh, everything was done by hand by then. Even when I started, you know, we hand wrote our tickets. We had to hand calculate our tickets. It was a great place to to you know to learn the the industry, really learn the industry. I'll never forget. And this is again, I was like, maybe wow, 21 years old or something like that, and I walked into the Palace Station. This is when their book. Used to, you know, where it used to be. I'm, I mean, people are not going to have any clue what I'm talking about <laughs> if they haven't been to Vegas. But it used to be off to the side instead of where it is now in the front. And I walked in there and I made a bet on Thanksgiving morning. And I bet I'd said what side I wanted. It wasn't the side I wanted. I meant the other side. The guy's doing his handwritten thing and he's pa it's packed. It's busy. And I'm walking away. Oh, no. And I come back and I saw this look, this glare, because he had to go back in and, and redo everything and rewrite the thing. And he also told me, you never want to change your bet after you've made it. And guess what? He was right. I lost that day. I learned a good lesson. But I got to ask you real quickly, because your skills have allowed you to set lines from all kinds of locales. You know, you and I and Marco D'Angelo uh, had lunch the other day and we were talking about all the places that you've been literally i'm in a globe trotter when it comes to set lines central america as far away as australia england 
Are there any differences in how you have to make the lines, let's say in Australia or the UK, compared to what you do in the US? You know, I have a system that I learned from Sonny that uh, I pretty much have maintained wherever I've been, whether it was Bahamas, Curacao, Australia or England or, or you know, Las Vegas. And I've stuck with that system. It's been very successful over the years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just different locale, different, you know, <laughs> different sure. time zone, uh, but pretty much I've, I've stayed with the same very successful system and it's, it's worked awesome. out really well. You worked with Bob Gregorica also and, and he was at the Sands for a long time and well-known odds maker here in Las Vegas and abroad and I had a chance to work with Bob for a season or two on a TV show we used to do. Any G-rated or PG-rated stories we could talk about Bob a little bit? Well, uh, I was fortunate enough, I, I was working with Bob at the Frontier and uh, he got the opportunity to uh, to come on and open the, uh, the or take over the Sands Sportsbook mm -hmm. when Sheldon Adelson bought it and uh, he brought me over as his assistant director slash sportsbook manager and uh, the uh, the first time that Sheldon Adelson ever introduced himself to the management of, of his new management team was uh, August of 89 and he had this big whiteboard and he said his plans for the Sands property and he kept on drawing these big rectangles. Mm -hmm. He wanted to build tower after tower after tower. He wanted to have up to 7,000 rooms. Wow. Didn't quite make that, but between the, uh, the, the Venetian and, uh, and sister property, uh, I think he's got about 6,000 rooms. So it was really fascinating seeing this, this multi-billionaire mm -hmm. uh, at the very beginning of his hotel casino uh, operation days. And Bob and I were sitting there kind of just in awe of, sure. of what we were taking place. I bet. Watching. Lucky, lucky to be in that spot when you were. I mean, you were obviously good at what you did, and that's why you are where you are now. But just to be in that spot, you know, right place, right time would have been awesome back in the day. Uh, biggest memories, both good and bad, as an odds maker, you know, as a better, everybody knows, everybody remembers their worst beat. I want to know the time that you're sitting there and you're like, wow, it's time for a new gig. And then that game that you won <laughs> when you were jumping for joy and high five in the back room behind the sports book. Well, I tell you what, two really bad beats are, are, are some, two of my toughest beats were uh, Holyfield and Tyson won. Uh, we got obliterated. I was in the Bahamas at the time, and we were a very small book, and, and that was a really, really tough loss for us. But also, I'll never forget Christian Leitner's turnarounder oh, yeah. over Kentucky. Uh, that really hurt us. We, we, needed, we needed Kentucky in the game. We needed them for the, the, the conference futures. We needed them for the, for the uh, uh, NCAA futures, mm -hmm. and we were, uh, you know, two seconds away from eliminating Duke, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Leitner stuck me in the heart again. As a Rebel fan, he's done it a few different times. <laughs> Final question before we let you go, uh, and I want to talk about Jerry's Nugget again, and you, and, you know, I was talking to Brian Leonard the other day, and he mentioned you're not afraid, obviously, to put your opinion on the line, which, of course, appeals to sharp players who are looking for the half-point advantage. Uh, one way or the other. How do you balance the big sharp action against your regular clientele? We really don't do a lot of balancing. Um, I have always held the philosophy that I don't want to paint the numbers. Wherever I've been, I, I, I put up unique, uh, unique numbers. Uh, it's something I'm proud of doing. Almost maybe a little bit more at Jerry's Nugget because we're off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. uh, but anybody that looks at our lines, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, on the Don Best screen or Vegas Insider or just comes in, they're going to see different numbers, uh, not just one or two a day. They're going to see several and oftentimes more than a half a point. Uh, we've always been known for value throughout the casino and the race and sports book is, is, uh, follows that pattern. Mark, I, I tell you this conversation, listening to these stories, and we just scratched the surface barely. Uh, this could have been a three-hour discussion <laughs> that we had, but we got to wrap it up. I'd like to call this, if you don't mind, call this part one with Mark Dufty, and then after the holidays, maybe that week of the national championship game in college football, we get you back for part two I'd because there's so much more to talk about with you. Great stuff, as always. Have a terrific Thanksgiving week. And Mark Dufty, uh, sportsbook director over at Jerry's Nugget, one of, Jerry's Nugget, Jerry's Nugget <laughs> one of the good guys in the business, standalone book, sets the numbers and stands by. I am like nobody else in the business. Quick thanks, by the way, to Vegas Chris for getting this whole ball rolling to have uh, Mark on the set today. And again, we'll be here all weekend long at the website. The videos are up. Marco and Brian, you want to check out their game predictions all week long right here at wagertalk.com. No matter what you do this Thanksgiving weekend, just make sure you land in the win column by Sunday night. We'll talk to you next week.